Hello, good day viewers. Uh, welcome to another biology presentation. So this is your presenter, Mr. Mlenga. So I want us to look at lesson one in biology under the topic called sexual reproduction in flowering plants. So this is a grade 12 topic. So the subtopic of this lesson is reproduction in plants. Uh, specific outcomes. Identify the parts of a typical flower. Describe the functions of various parts of a flower. So at the end of our lesson for today, you should be able to identify the parts of a typical flower. You should also be able to describe the functions of various parts of a flower. We are going to start with the reproduction in plants. So the sexual organs of plants are flowers. And the flowers, we have the male parts that are called the stamens. And we also have the female parts that are called the carpels or pestles. The male parts of a flower, we have the filament and the anther. So the filament and the anther are the male parts of the flower. While the female parts of the flower, we have the stigma, the style, and the ovaries. These are called the female parts of the flower. So let us now look at the structure of a flower. So this is the structure of the flower where we have the filament and the, uh, the anther. So these two, they are collectively called the stamen, which are the male parts of the flower. Then we also have the carpel or the pestle. These are called the female parts of the flower where we have the stigma, the style, and the ovary. So when it comes to the structure of a flower, you have to make sure that you are able to identify the parts of this flower. Apart from identifying the parts of the flower, you have to make sure that you are also able to explain the functions of the flower. So when you look at the stigma there, the stigma uh, they just uh, is, is a sticky part that is able to trap the pollen grains okay then the style there the style joins the stigma to the ovary okay then when you look at the ovary there in the ovary that's where the ovules are formed so the ovules these are the female sex cells okay so when you look at the anther there the anther this is where the pollen grains are formed and the filament what they do they just hold the anther in, posi uh, in position then when we look at the petals so the petals i'm sure we are able to see the petals right here so these petals you can see that they are they are colorful okay so petals are the colorful leaves that um uh, that insects are normally attracted to so apart from them being colorful they also contain a scent so that scent that they contain insects are attracted to that and they are able to pollinate a flower so in some flowering plants the petals they they have what you call the nectar okay so these nectaries what they normally do is is just a sugary liquid part that is very sweet which attracts the insects to be able to pollinate a flower. For example, the honeybees. So the honeybees, they are attracted to the nectaries, okay? And they normally use it as part of what? Part of food. So that is the function of the petals. So when you look at the sepals right there, okay? So the sepals, what they normally do is they just cover a flower, okay, in a bud. And they also protect a flower from drying up. And they also protect a flower from damage from the pests. Okay. That is the function of what? The petals. Sorry, the sepals. So when you look at the this part. So we have the part that is called the receptacle. So this part called the receptacle. It just supports the floral part. The floral parts. Okay just protects the floral parts right here you can see this is where we have the receptacle then we also have the the pedicel there okay so these are the 
parts of the wati of the flower. So you have to make sure that you know these, these parts. Very important. So for clarification purposes, you can also look at this part which has got the functions that I've just explained. Okay. So let us now look at the functions of these parts of the flower. We have the paid cell or the flower stalk. So the paid cell, this is the part that links the flower to the stem and conducts water, nutrients, and hormones between these two parts. Then we have the receptacle. The receptacle, we said this is the swollen end of the paid cell where other parts of the flower are attached. Then we also have the sepals right here. So the sepals are the leaf-like structures that enclose the flower in the bud stage and they protect it from drying up and damage by the pests. It also protects the flower from harsh conditions. So if there are conditions that are very harsh, the sepals, they are going to enclose the flower in the bud stage and they will protect the flower from those harsh conditions. Okay, so that is it the function of what the sepals so they perform those good functions to a flower then apart from that we also have the the petals the petals we have said these are structures that are brightly colored and they are scented in a in the insect pollinated flowers in order to attract the what the insects so these petals they are brightly colored okay and they have got scent. So the scent that they have is able to attract the insects. When the insects they go to the flower, they will be able to pollinate the wati, the flower. Okay. Then in some flowers, the petals have what we call a nectar. So these nectar guidelines now they read to the nectaries in the flower, and these nectaries are just sugary liquid substance. Okay. That flowers use that insects use as food for example honey bee insects we now come to the stigma so the stigma is the part where pollen grains are deposited during pollination it's also a stick part that is able to trap the pollen the pollen grains then apart from the stigma we also have the the star okay so we know that uh, both the star and the stigma and the ovary, these are female parts of the flower. So the star, what it does is it just holds the stigma in position and links it to the ovary. Okay. Apart from that, the star is also used as uh, a passage for pollen grain on its way from the stigma to the ovary through the pollen, the pollen tube. Then we have the ovary right there. So the ovary is the part that makes and contains the ovules. So the ovary it becomes the fruit after fertilization. And the ovules, they contain the female gametes the, or the female sex cells. And it also becomes a seed after fertilization. So we can take a look at the structure of the embryonic sac, okay, which the ovule contains. Okay, so this right here, is the structure of the embryonic sac and this is what the ovule contains okay so we are done looking at uh, the parts of the flower and functions of these parts of uh, the flower let us now try to answer some questions okay so let us now try to answer some of the questions that they can bring in an exam on this part so we are going to start with our question one right here our question one reads Label the parts 1 to 8. So you can see we have the part that is labeled 1 here. So this part labeled 1 is the stigma. We have the part labeled 2 right here, which is this one. So this part labeled 2 is the anther. Okay. Then we also have the part labeled 3. So the part labeled 3 is this part right here. This is called the, the star. Okay. Then we also have the part robot 4 right here. So the part robot 4 is this part, which is the filament, okay, which holds the anther in position. Then we also have the part robot 5, this part right here. We can see these are the colored leaves. 
So these color derives, we call them as what? The petals, okay? Then we also have the part robot 6, okay? So this part robot 6 is the ovary. I hope we are moving together. Then we also have the part robot 7 right here. This part robot 7 right here. These are the sepals, okay? These are the sepals, the one that encloses the the flower during the bud stage, the ones that protects the flower from drying uh, drying up and from damage from the pests. And it also protects the flower during harsh conditions. Then we have the part that is the robot 8. And this part is called the, the receptacles. Okay, so we have said the part robot 1 is the stigma, the part robot 2 is the anther, the part robot 3 is the star, the part robot 4 is the filament, the part robot 5 the petals, the part robot 6 the ovary, the part robot 7 the sepals, and the part robot 8 the receptacle. Okay, so we have to make sure that we are able to identify and label the parts of the flower and state their functions. So we now come to question two. So our question two reads, which parts make up the pistil? Okay, so which parts make up the pistil or the capels? So we know that the pistils are also called the capels, which are the female parts of the flower. So the female parts of the flower are made up of the stigma, which is the part rebod one. They are also made up of what? The, the star, which is the part rebod three. And they are also made up the, of the ovary, which is the part rebod T six. So the stigma, the star, and the ovary, together they make up the female parts of the flower that we call the pestil or the capels. So we have said uh, the pestils or the capels are the female parts of a flower that is made up of the stigma, which is the part rebod D1. It's also made up of the, the star, which is the part rebod 2. It is more also made up of the ovary, which is the part rebod 6. So I do hope that um, you are getting me. We are moving together. We now move on to another question. So this is our question 3 right here. So our question 3 reads, which parts makes up the stamens? Which part makes up the stamens? So the stamens, these are the male parts of the flower. And the male parts of the flower are made up of the anther, which is the part rebod 2. Okay? It's also made up of the filament, which is the part rebod 4. So the anther and the filament, they make up the male parts of the flower that we call the stamens. So we have said the anther, the part rebod 2, makes up the male parts of the flower called the stamens, also the filament, the part rebod 4. They also make up of the male parts of the flower that we call the stamens. We have answered this question. Let us now move on to another question, which is question 4. State the function of the part uh, 2 and D 6. So the part rebod 2 right here, we have said this is the anther, and the function of the anther, this is where the pollen grains are formed. Okay? And the part rebod 6, we have said these are the ovary. Okay? So the ovary, it contains the ovules, or this is where the ovules are formed. The ovules are the female sex gametes. Okay? So we have said uh, the part rebod 2, this is the anther. That is where the pollen grains are formed. And the part rebod 6, that is the ovary. That is where the female organ, uh, that is where the female organ or the ovules are, are formed. Okay? So, we have um, finished answering these questions. So, we have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much, everybody, for having time to view this content. This has been your presenter. Mr. Mrenga, bye-bye.